Welcome to the day three. Actually, we're going on day four. So this is the beginning of day four for you all. And um, I'm Francis, and I'm a Bliss Junkie. So recovering, but, uh, and that might not be unrelated to why I got this Dharma talk. Oh, I saw, oh, I'm covering breakthrough. Hmm. Sure, they picked that, that on purpose. Um, so I'm here to talk about breakthrough. Um, and before, wanted to give a couple of um, pointers. <clears throat> so I have a tendency to talk a lot, make a lot of links, can be confusing. So don't worry. Uh, I'll start with the gist, what's the most important thing about it. And after that, like Lisa was saying yesterday, you know, listen. You might go to your go to move and just let the words wash over you. What is useful will stay, and what is not really not appropriate for what you your what is not relevant to you will wash away back with the seat. Um, the other point I wanted to clarify, so we're presenting the, this model called the phases of insight, which is really, um, from my perspective, a meta model in the sense that it's kind of a very general model onto which others model can be uh, pointed at. So I'm going to talk about things which might not be uh, viewed as traditional or are not part necessarily of the traditional um, the, the, the stage of insight model, which is covered in the Visuddha Magga and the traditional Pali Canon, um, which is uh, the basis of the tradition. I'm going to talk about the two and contrast, you know, because in a way the, the classical models is more precise, but more geared toward a certain practice. In this, in the Sangha, I mean, there's many different styles of practice um, and and as such, the model is a little bit fuzzy, um, can apply at multiple levels. Um, so it's, it's, it's if you like precision, that can get up your nerve. But uh, in the end, I mean, like uh, many scientists will tell you, all models are false, but some are useful. So this is a, a useful model for when it's useful, use it. When it's not, pick another one. I think that's all the warnings I had. So, and we can start. Um, the breakthrough phase, so that's the, and I said I'm going to start with the gist. So imagine, so if you uh, want to close your eyes or not, doesn't matter, um, you went on a hike, you know, to climb a peak, maybe in the Alps or for our American friends, the Rockies. And you set out early in the day, started to walk, uh, climbing the path. And because you're a mindfulness, uh, into mindfulness, you read the attention to all of these, your foot, uh, one foot after the other going up. It's hard, it's generous. But as things go up, things get easier. You get in sync with the breath and the feet and the walking up is just happening by itself still paying attention to the movement going up. And then you, are re you arrive at the top. And then whew, the, the view is magnificent. Look at that. You can see Bow Valley. And oh, it's, you have the overview. And you can also see the details at uh, a church in the, in the valley and even like the community around it and uh, the water source. and all of that, oh, this is magnificent, you're blown away, um, you feel like at oneness with the view, and this is, you want all of your friends to see it and come, and then uh, you realize, oh, I cannot hang here forever, I don't have water, there's no food source, I'll need to climb down, oh, and then you realize that actually the walk down is going to be very hard on your knees, and is that clouds, storm clouds you're seeing at, a, in, at the horizon? So that's the gist of the breakthrough phase. Okay. 
So what does that mean? <clears throat> this, um, the breakthrough phrase, follow, follow the, the effort. We set out on the path, we apply our practice, we practice, and then at some points, we get into the groove of practice. We enter this flow state, you know, where the practice is doing, is happening by itself. We are with our object of concentration or we have mindfulness. And that's really when we enter the breakthrough phase, when the practice is happening by itself, it becomes easy. And we also come to um, get like these first fruit, magnificent experience of the practice. That's um, the, the, the breakthrough phase is often, I mean, people are going for the first time through it will often um, report it as one of the most meaningful experience. Um, at the same time, um, given this is a vigilant model, we can think of like more mundane way of understanding the breakthrough phase. I'm sure you can relate, you know, you have a friend who decided, uh, took out a mindfulness course and then become like, oh, just kind of overblown by the ease and calm that they were able to experience and then like start to talk about to all their friends about it. And I mean, even getting on some people nerve <laughs> and, um, and, and <clears throat> you get the picture. That's, that's, that's in a form of, of breakthrough phase in a way. And at the other extreme, you have all of the, um, these mystical experience which um, fall into that part of the model. Um, there's probably a lot of religious movement that started with someone experiencing the breakthrough phase. Um, so um, the... Um, So the breakthrough phrase in when we're practicing, and so an important point also is that, and we present the model as being linear, you know, seeking effort, breakthrough, and the following stages. But actually, um, not everyone starts at the seeking phase. There are many people who become seekers because uh, they experience the breakthrough phase. Uh, many people can ex have mystical experience or these a breakthrough experience without being part of a contemplative path. Um, if you're familiar with um, the, uh, actually, that's my story. You know, I mean, I became a, seek a seeker in my mid twenties after kind of a mind blowing experience um, involving cannabis and self hypnosis after reading as a crime novel. You know. The inspector was doing self-hypnosis and that then stumbled into weird territories, which kind of, oh, what was that? And really trying to make sense of it and then discovered like, oh, I mean, really having the experience that tapping into a, 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 U, a universal stream. Of, is that, 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 I mean, and that turned like the hardcore science, materi scientific materialism, uh, materialist that I was into a seeker. Um, which I'd like to grapple with, <laughs> but this is just woo woo from the other side of the fence, you know. And so that's 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 very common. Uh, I mean, not everyone starts there, but more than one actually have these experiences where um, then, which actually after a while might get back back to seeking and effort. Uh, for me, it was, yeah, I discovered that, yeah, there's this old tradition of Indian uh, sage who had uh, talk about similar territory, and that sent me on a never-ending quest. Um, so in the breakthrough phase, yeah, so there's also, um, it's also related to all of the Kundalini uh, awakening or syndrome that you might have heard. Um, the, so. And and going to talk a little bit more about these fireworks, you know, that might happen in this phase. When um, one 
so in the phase of insight, the, not the phase of insight, but in the stage of insight. So in the classical model, the state uh, that the stage that corresponds to this is called the arising and passing away. Um, so this is the um, <clears throat> the first. Um, this this is characterized by so arising of passing away. So it characterized by uh, developing mindfulness and then being able to see the arising and passing away of phenomena. I mean, we all can get like a taste for impermanence by following the breath and seeing how things move. But at this with at these higher doses, then it's like if the we're able to see. Uh, the 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 breath you know as a beginning and an end but then the breath becomes like this series of moments so it's not like there's one breath but each movement of the abdomen uh, the uh, the uh, the chest seen as like a, as being a beginning and an end and succeeding each other without necessarily with even like maybe a, even like a gaps between it's, it's more discontinuous than continuous. That's a very technical definition of the stage based on the practice system embedded uh, around that model. Um, but um, the phenomena that happen around that are uh, common to uh, other ways of practicing. Um, and for instance, in a way, the breakthrough phase is characterized by you're getting a little bit of the taste of what you were practicing for. So, you know, I mean, might be um, experiencing oneness, love, this moving away of phenomena, this facilitating of experience, if you're like a hardcore uh, insight meditator, or, um, you know, seeing God, if you're more in a Christian contemplative. Um, the the many traditions will warn or have, uh, warn against the the fireworks and the weird experience that can happen in this real uh, in this phase. Um, I mean, this is all all things related to powers and fall into dirt that get in this in, in this phase as well. The one of the most hardcore, I mean, the Zen, in the Zen tradition, this is all falls under Makyo. They call it Makyo, which is the, the, the realm of the ghost. It's, in a way, the Zen view on that is not different than the scientific materialist. This is all delusion, you know, not the real thing. Um, the, um, in the Yoga Sutras, so for all the yoga teacher here, uh, in the, uh, the Yoga Sutras in chapter three, uh, where's the quotation? Um, the um, the, cha the third chapter called Visuddhi is that um, the Vibhuti Pada, which uh, can be translated as experiences, as a, 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 su a sutra um, in this chapter, wh where it describes you know all the things that can be developed through um, contemplation, uh, yogic contemplation, and all all, every, all the, the the magical powers you can imagine are listed there. And then there's this sutta, which says these experiences resulting from contemplation are obstacles to self-realization, but appear to be attainments or powers to the outgoing or worldly mind. So similar, um, uh, so less, you know, uh, stark view on the powers than the Zen tradition, but still this is seen as an obstacle. Um, same thing in the, the Visuddhimagga. So um, in the Visuddhimagga, they, they call it the 10 corruptions of insight. So one's mind wavers due to the light, knowledge, and rapture. The mind is moved by tranquility and happiness. It shakes due to the resolution, energy, and mindfulness equanimity along with the equilibrium and delight. So in the, uh, from the insight perspective, um, it's, it's similar to the yoga uh, sutra tradition. These are obstacles. So yes, they exist. I mean, there's all chapters on cultivating the powers and Ararat, you know, Anarad are supposed to display uh, incredible abilities because they traverse this, but 
I mean, in a way, this is in the metaphor at the beginning, you know, you're paying attention to their feet, the breath, and suddenly you're just overblown by the experience. You forget, you know, to be mindful of putting one feet after the other and putting and watching your breath. Um, there's this monk story, forget, it could be either Zen or Theravadan, fits in both, which is this, this, this monk goes to the, their teacher and they tell them about all this beautiful experience. They just arrive and they, they are certain that they have attained enlightenment. And then the teacher just nods and asks them, was this on the in-breath or the out-breath? Which points to, from this hardcore practice, it's kind of, well, your, all these experiences are nice, but you're forgetting what's the, your practice. You <laughs> stick, to, stick to it. <laughs> um, so here we, um, in, 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 this tra in, 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 in this more open model, you know, I mean, if the, uh, yeah, I actually wanted, this is another quotation from the, um, the Yuga Sutras, uh, same chapter, uh, one of the last one. So when invited by the celestial, celestial beings, no cause should be allowed to arise in the mind that would allow either acceptance of the offer or the smile of pride from receiving the invitation. Because to allow such thoughts to arise again might create the possibility of repeating undesirable thoughts and action. So again, if you get an offer from an angel to give you a ride, you know, if you're a yogi, you should decline. Here, actually, if that's supporting of your intention, powers to you. But, you know, it's, if, if you were checking in with me, I would ask you, how is that supportive of your intention? Um, but celestial beings can be good allies. Um, if you work in, uh, with a view that, that where that's possible. Um, yes. Um, the, there's a saying, you might you probably have heard it, which is, Better not to start the path once started, better to come to finish it fast. And that's, that, that's really is about this faith. Uh, once you enter breakthrough, practice takes a life of its own. And the warning around the end of, um, oh, the walk down might hurt the knees, there might be a storm coming, is referring to that. Because once you enter the, 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 this, then... It, it can, I mean, yeah, there's a life of its own and this is where it's pointing. And the, 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 these impurities of insight, you know, illumination, seeing lights, having certainty about, we understand, you know, ultimate 42, the ultimate answer to life, the universe and everything. Um, we, the, the certainty, this knowledge, that's not the obstacle, actually. The obstacle is the clinging and the, um, the attachment that we put on these experiences. Um, I mean, from my experience, I mean, I spent years trying to get back to that high I had experienced. You know, it's kind of, this is, wow. And then, like, it's, how can I find in getting in all sorts of contortions to try to control experience to get back this, you know, being in the light of God or however you want to call it. And um, that's the real obstacle. It's the attachment to experience. That's why the teacher tells you, asks you, is, was it on the in-breath or the unbreath? Don't forget your practice. You know, you have not arrived from these, uh, the destination that is presumed by this, these traditions. Um, and it's, it's also, also why in the insight tradition, um, the arising and passing away is called uh, the first insight. In a way, uh, once you're able to see the arising of passing away of the phenomena, you are a beginner of insight. Um, this is the final quote from the, the Sudamaga here. Mm -hmm. 
Thus, one develops insight into arising and passing away, realizing that all phenomena that come into existence are fragile and come to an end. In this way, one gains an immature knowledge of arising and passing away from exactly 50 aspects. Forget the 50 aspects. Such person is considered an insight beginner. <clears throat> so how uh, what's yeah so everything is that, uh, that arise will pass away the bliss i mean as cause and conditions and as thus expecting unending bliss is an obstacle to practice same thing with the certainty the rapture all of these impurities which are blissful state which are really enjoyable but they, are, they, 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 they were not there, they arose, and they will pass. Um, the, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, so how do we practice with, uh, when we get, the break, we get into the breakthrough phrase? So <clears throat> in a way, um, this is not necessarily traditional advice, but I think it's okay to actually appreciate and be grateful for these experiences. They are signs of the effort we've put in um, and appreciating and enjoying them is, 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 is you, you, can, you, you may do that. <laughs> it's worth doing even, I'd say. But um, then what you want to pay, uh, what to pay attention to is keep, remember why you're practicing in a way and reconnecting to that intention and then ensuring that actually this is aligned with your intention. The other thing to, uh, to, to watch out for in the stage of practice is the subtle um, intention of, of trying to avoid things. In a way, you still want to include and uh, in a way, if you find yourself kind of um, um, avoiding things that will uh, kill your bliss or, you know, get you down. So if you're trying to preserve the eye, if you find something like clinging to the eye, that's a sign that it might be time to re re resume practice if you've stopped or continue with it, you know, because, um, yeah, everything that expands will contract. And when we're fighting the contraction, that's when uh, we get in trouble. Um, there is a saying also that this, this phase is characterized like by clarity. You know, in a way, this is we're seeing, um, we're tuning into um, some clarity. And, and so it's like the clarity of form. And we, we, we I mean, we know this is, this is the way it is. And, and that's all good. But this is like at the center. So when things are in focus, we can put our focus anywhere and then things become clear. But um, at, in the next stage of practice, that, that doesn't work so more. But the, the, so a way to, to move forward in the cycles is to start looking at the periphery, these edges where uh, actually, yeah, that's, that's a little bit fuzzier. Not sure about that. This is clearer. And then so opening up to uh, including, so even with the strong knowing, knowing the not knowing, orienting towards that. So these are ways that um, can get the, the cycle to progress and move forward in, the, uh, in practice. 